From this morning's Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 3. But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. So far the word of the Lord. One of the senior chaplains at the chaplain's basic course stood up and began his lecture saying, There are two kinds of chaplains. The ones who drink coffee and hang around with the officers and the ones who get dirty hanging out with their soldiers. Be that guy. And I took those words to heart. As a battalion chaplain, I knew that I was the eyes and ears of the commander as to the welfare and the morale of his men. And so I made it my practice to be wherever my soldiers were doing whatever they were doing. If they were on the obstacle course, my assistant and I were on the obstacle course. If the soldiers were out in a field exercise, slogging it through the mud or crawling in the sand, so were we. The old man could take just one look at me or cringe at my smell and know exactly the condition of his troops. A single glance or whiff informed him of the mood of the battalion. Now, at times, I found myself running the gamut from freezing cold and wet to being hot and sweaty, even when it was supposed to be a dry heat. From being hungry and thirsty to being dog-tired and miserable, and yet I liked being with my soldiers. And they were just as glad to see me as I was to see them, because they knew I was the colonel's barometer. Yeah, I would hear their gripes and their complaints, but I also heard words of admiration and appreciation when command acted upon their request. I was the commander's link to his troops, even as I served as their voice to him. We just saying, Jesus, once with sinners numbered, had no blemish of his own. In the waters of the Jordan, his true worth and work were shown. Heaven opened and the Spirit there descended like a dove as the Father's voice resounded, Hear my Son, the one I love. As Matthew chapter 3 unfolds, John the Baptist is beginning his ministry proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now John was a bit odd for some, but soon the consensus was that he was a prophet, perhaps even the prophet foretold to come. His was the voice of God to people who hadn't had a prophet in their midst for 400 years. And when they came out to the wilderness to hear him, well, evidently his words pricked their consciences since we read that they were going out to him and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sin. Though a multitude were convicted by the Holy Spirit working through John's testimony, as we see, the religious types were not very moved. He said to them, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. One day, as John was preaching and baptizing people in the Jordan River, Jesus showed up. Now, for 30 years, he had been quietly living as the carpenter's son, but now he steps forward. And our text for today picks up at verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. Now, John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. 
Now, John knew at some point the Messiah was going to show up. God had promised him that. He had been proclaiming his coming for quite some time. And though he knew that the Christ would eventually make himself known, he was still caught off of guard when Jesus steps up to take his place in the line of sinners to be baptized. Hey, John, I'm here to be baptized. Uh, Jesus, John blurts out, uh, I think he got it wrong. I shouldn't be baptizing you. I'm not worthy. You should be baptizing me. But Jesus insisted, do it. God's work, putting things right all these centuries, is coming together right now in this baptism. That's how the message version puts it. Let it be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. In coming to John to be baptized along with everyone else, Jesus chose to identify himself with the sinners standing in line. Along with unfaithful spouses, cheating merchants, doubting Debbies and Donalds, and all the multitude who had been stirred to repentance by the Holy Spirit to confess their sins, to assuage their consciences, in the midst of that line stood the Holy One who would go on to the cross for them and for their salvation. He stood under a hot Middle Eastern sun and in the mud of the Jordan's banks along with the rest of them. He wasn't there to set an example for others to follow. He was there to identify himself with sinners as the one who would substitute his righteousness for our sins. He was there as the one who would satisfy the demands of a holy God upon unholy people. He was there to make sacrifice of his life for the sake of our salvation. That's right, I said, our salvation. We were just on, as much on his heart and mine as those to the front of him and those to his back, those to his left and those to his right. Even as he was praying in the garden for us, while praying for all of his disciples before his arrest, Jesus said, I do not pray for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Jesus is not coming to John's baptism for repentance for himself. He had no need to. I mean, even John saw that. I need to be baptized by you, he says. No, Jesus was there in line with sinners because it was time for him to assume the great office and work as Savior. He chooses baptism by John as the right way to begin his work of redeeming the sinful children of men from sin, death, and hell in order to restore them to God's gracious kingdom. He chooses baptism to, re to restore us to our merciful Father. It is as Paul tells the Romans in today's epistle, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by, death into, by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Jesus specifically came to be baptized in the Jordan by John to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus is our substitute. He chooses to take our place before God's holy and righteous judgment, chooses to take God's wrath upon himself in our stead. And because he substitutes himself for us poor miserable sinners, we do not have to fear God's wrath or wince at the prospect of his eternal punishment for our sins. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body might be brought to nothing, Paul says. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Thus with St. Paul, we can rejoice knowing that if we have died with Christ, then we believe we will also live with him. Jesus prepares the waters of our baptism to make us clean before God's judgment seat as one of those who have washed their robes and made them white 
in the blood of the Lamb. Jesus submitted to John's baptism along with sinners who were coming in repentance to affirm his identity with the sinful children of men, to provide them with a perfect righteousness, even as the scriptures teach us. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do, by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he can send sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Jesus chose to serve us by coming to our earth, taking our place, and accomplishing our salvation through his sacrifice. He showed us the goodness of our God, of whom David speaks in today's psalm, for you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. You, Lord, are God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me, Give your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign of your favor. And God responded to David's request, showing both him and the whole of humankind his favor by sending Jesus, my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased, who came into our world for us to fulfill all righteousness. This is the baptism that our Savior greatly longed to undergo. This the crimson cleansing needed so the world God's love might know. This is the mission of Messiah as he stepped from Jordan's stream. He, the chosen and anointed Son of God, sent to redeem. Jesus, once with sinners numbered, full obedience was your path. You by death have consecrated water in this saving bath. Dying to the sin of Adam, rising to a life of grace, we are counted with the righteous. Over us, the cross you trace. Truly, thanks be to God, is our response. And all God's people said, now may this the peace of God that passes all human understanding. Keep and guard your hearts and minds unto, fight, unto Christ for life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>